Hey guys, it's Tim with Willie Howe Technology. Thanks for being with us today. We appreciate each and every one of you. Willie's feeling a little under the weather this week, so I'm going to do a video for you guys today, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, today we're going to talk about Raspberry Pi, and if you're not familiar with Raspberry Pi, they are these little mini computers that can do a lot, uh, and they're really inexpensive. So this is the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Uh, it has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in, 10 bucks for this thing, and it's uh, pretty powerful for what it does. So uh, it has a mini HDMI for video, micro USB for USB and for power, and it does take a micro SD card for the operating system on this one. The Pi 3B Plus, which is this guy, uh, these run about 35 bucks and they have a lot more on them, a little bit more powerful than the Zero W. Um, does have four USB ports full size. They are USB 2.0, not 3.0. It's got a network card or network adapter. Um, it's not a gig, uh, but it is close to 350, 350 megabits per second. Uh, it uses the same bus as the USB port, so it couldn't go full gig. Um, does have three and a half millimeter for audio, uh, full size HDMI for video, um, micro USB for power, and it also uses the micro SD card for the operating system on this one as well. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you where to get the operating systems, uh, how to load it on your SD card, how to enable SSH so you can get into this thing and use it, and also enable wireless. Uh, without having to plug in a monitor and a keyboard to get this thing up and going initially. So we're going to be dealing with the Zero W today and I guess let's just jump right in. So if you head over to raspberrypi.org um, you can read all about Raspberry Pis, see all the cool projects you can do with them. Um, it's great for learning, people use them for all sorts of things and we'll jump into a little bit of that while we're waiting on some other stuff here. So if you go to downloads, there's several different operating systems you can choose from. So there's noobs, new out of the box software, an easy operating system installer for beginners. Raspbian is the official supported Raspberry Pi operating system based on Debian. This is the one that we'll be looking at today. Uh, Raspberry Pi desktop, um, Raspberry Pi desktop for PC and Mac based on Debian. Um, and then there's also some third-party operating systems based on Ubuntu, uh, Windows 10, IoT for Internet of Things, um, Weather Station, uh, Risk OS, PyNet, and then several other third parties that aren't even listed on the raspberrypi.org site. Uh, so like I said, we're going to jump in with Raspbian today. So if we go to Raspbian, excuse me, there's a few different uh, versions that are available. Raspbian Stretch with desktop and recommended software. Uh, image with desktop and recommended software based on Debian Stretch. So basically this will give you a GUI similar to like Ubuntu for example and then preloaded with a bunch of other software that you may find interesting. Uh, couldn't tell you exactly what it is because I don't use that one specifically. Um, Raspberry, Raspbian Stretch with desktop so that's going to be same as this one, only without the recommended software. A little bit lighter, but you still have the GUI uh, for GUI desktop for uh, managing and using the, the Pi. Then there's also Raspberry Raspbian Stretch Lite. Uh, minimal image based on Raspbian Stretch. It's about a 350 meg download zipped. Uh, unzipped, it's closer to about a gig and a half. Um, but it's super lightweight and only ha gives you the CLI and that's what we're going to use today. So if we download that zip, uh, it's 351 meg, okay, let that go through and do its thing. Um, I do already have this uh, downloaded so we're going to jump to the next part while that one's actually downloading itself. Uh, what we'll need for this is Win32 Disk Imager. Uh, free software, I have a link for this also in the description and really easy to use. So uh, after you load it, you will need to open it with uh, UAC, so elevated privileges. 
it'll prompt you, do you want to use this UAC, do you want to allow it to make changes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, once you're in there, go in and find your image that you've extracted from the zip and select your micro SD card. Uh, it is smart enough to not give you the option to overwrite your C drive, thankfully. Um, but do verify, make sure that you are selecting the correct device. If you have multiple devices or thumb drives or other external hard drives or anything like that plugged into your machine, please make sure that you're looking at the correct one. Um, don't need to do any hash and we're going to write. So, so what we're looking at is this image to this device. We're going to write this image to this device. You can also use this tool to create backups of your SD card after it's all completed. And what you would do with that is you would put the image name that you want to write or want to save it as here and then read from the device to that image file and it will create an image backup of your drive. But right now we're going to hit write. So yes, we'll let that go. And after this is finished writing, we'll be right back. So it's finished up here. It took about two minutes and change. Um, and after it's completed, it acts the same as if you were to uh, insert the SD card back into your computer. Uh, you'll see it comes up with two different drives. You got a D drive that says boot, and then you need to format the disk and drive E before you can use it. You do not want to format uh, this at all. This is the Linux partition that's got all the operating system and everything else in there. Uh, but what Raspbian does do is uh, it's nice enough to give you the boot partition that is readable by Windows. So the really nice thing about this is, is now we can just come in here, create a new text file and call this SSH and with no extension, are you sure you want to change it? Yes. And just dropping this file in here like this is enough to, whenever you insert this thing in the Raspberry Pi and boot it up, it will enable SSH for you so you don't have to get in there and do it. You can actually remote into it via SSH. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is create another file and we're going to call this file WPA supplicant.conf and we're going to open that and we're going to paste this in and uh, what this will do is connect your Pi and configure uh, Wi-Fi on your Raspberry Pi for you and get it joined to the network. Once again, this is really handy for the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero where there is no NIC so you don't have to, uh, once again, plug in the monitor and keyboard and actually uh, get all this configured manually. So a few pieces of information that you need to make sure is that your country code matches your country your SSID matches your SSID and your PSK matches your password for your wireless network. Once that's done, save it, close it, pop out the SD card, and plug it into the Pi. I turned the Pi on. So uh, there is no on off button on the Pi. Uh, you plug it in, it has power, it's hot. So you want to make sure that you insert the SD card before you plug it in and then it will do its thing and boot. Um, after it's booted, uh, if everything goes as it's supposed to, you should be able to find your, your Raspberry Pi in the network. A couple of different ways you can do that. You can use Nmap if you're familiar with that. You can jump into uh, your router or your unified controller and find the device that's named Raspberry Pi. It is Raspberry Pi by default with the Raspbian build. Other builds may call it something different, so just look for the, the device that matches what you're looking for. So I'm going to jump out and find it on my network and show you the next, next thing here. All right, so I found it, and I'm gonna try this. It may or may not work right away. Um, if you ping Raspberry Pi and force IPv4, if you do have IPv6 enabled on your network, don't hit me, Willie. 
It may, you may get lucky and find it. Did not find it that way. Let's try it with that local. And it did find it that way. So you may get lucky and not have to go out and hunt for it after it's all connected and configured. Uh, but we're looking at 192.168.10.175. So now we can go into 192.168.10.175 on port 22 using PuTTY. And server host key, do you want to confirm? Yes. And default username is Pi. And the default fault password is Raspberry. Log in and you're logged into your Raspberry Pi and you can start using it as you would any other Linux distribution. Um, you will see here SSH is enabled and the default password for the Pi user has not been changed. This is a security risk. Please log in as the Pi user and type password to set a new password. Highly recommend you guys do that, uh, especially if it's going to be on any kind of production network. Um, so yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you want to buy a Raspberry Pi, there will be links uh, or they'll be available in Willy's shop on Amazon. There will be a link in the description. Um, we'll have a link to Putty, to uh, Win32Gen, and to RaspberryPi.org for the downloads for Raspbian, all in the description as well. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, uh, don't forget to subscribe, and once again, thank you all for being here. Really do appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next video.